Here today at the Age Management Medicine Conference, the 17th one in fact, with the chair of the conference, who's been the chair since the beginning, Dr. De Derek De Silva. Derek is an internist practicing in New Jersey at Rutgers or? Uh, at Raritan Bay Medical Center okay. and JFK Medical Center. Excellent, okay. And we're here to learn, we want to hear more about your work, the work that you discussed in inflammation and use of supplements and how we basically can help people become healthier instead of waiting for illness. Yeah, you know, the world of uh, supplements for me is, is what I really love, it's what I really enjoy. but when we all go back and we look at what produces disease, you know, for me, disease is all about inflammation, right? I mean, whenever we look at this stuff, inflammation is the root of cancer. It's the root of heart disease. It's the root of diabetes. It's the root of everything. Absolutely. It's a common denominator. It is. And that's a great way to put it. It is a common denominator. Right. And that common denominator is something that we have to control. And the word inflammate, in Greek, word inflammation comes from the word, in, word inflama, inflame, which is fire. Hmm. So what we have to do is we have to learn to literally put out the fire. Because if we don't put out the fire, we're going to be in trouble. And the fire occurs at all levels. It can be in the belly with visceral fat, in the brain and lead to dementia and Alzheimer's. It can be in the lining of our arteries, so we're looking at heart attacks and strokes. It is all, literally, it doesn't localize in one spot. Because if you've got it in the blood vessels, you have likely have it in your brain, you likely have it in your eyes, you likely have it in your lungs. So it is, it is it's, it's all over it and it's all over us. So putting that fire out everywhere is extremely important. You're just pointing out the fact that we're basically connected as one human being. We don't have a heart somewhere and a brain somewhere that don't talk to each other. We see all the same molecules circulating through. And so what's the, the road to success for a human being? We have a group of doctors here who are attending because they're leaders. They want to adopt a proactive view of how you keep a patient healthy instead of waiting for disease. What would be your approach so we could help people understand more deeply what that means? What I tell people to do, and this is what I tell my patients to do, is to just to make sure that you pay attention to what you're eating, what you're doing. What I'm, what I'm calling this is I'm using the word conscious living. Consciously live and consciously eat so that every single action you perform has an effect, has a profound effect on your psyche and your total being. Whether it be what you think, how you act, how you react, what you put into your mouth, and how that whole thing works for me is extremely important. So it's a consciousness of how to live, what to do, how to eat. A deliberateness of choosing, for example, a low glycemic diet. Stay away from things that are white on your plate, exactly. be it potatoes, pasta, bread. How to choose um, items that you put in your mouth. Be cognizant, be thinking of it, and where it will add up to your total health. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's where we can talk about. We can talk about supplements. We can talk about food. Let's no, hear about supplements specifically. Yeah. There's so much out there, and I don't know, you don't have this problem, but I remember when I first started dealing with supplements and do we really need them? And, you know, medicine, conventional medicine is ultra against. They've just started to accept CoQ10 in people with, with statins, and there's a lot of data on that. Sure. But you walk through pharmacies, you walk through drugstores, um, you walk through grocery stores, and there are shelves and shelves. How do you know what you need and what's good for you? The whole choosing thing is, is, is so important because there is so much out there, as you pointed out. And that's a great point that you made. I, the funny thing is I will go into stores and I will go into a lot of the big box stores and I will stand there in the supplement aisle and watch people pick out what to buy, what to get. And you know what happens? What happens is people stand there, they look, 
And as soon as confusion sets in, when your brain is confused, it shuts down. And as soon as that brain shuts down, you walk away. So how do people do it? They choose their multi based on what's on sale or buy two, get one free. That's not how you choose your supplements. The way you choose your supplements is you find somebody or a company or a particular person that you like and you, you talk with them, you have a conversation with them, and you move along with them, and you question them. Where do you get your raw materials? Is it made in the United States? Is it manufactured here? Is it a GMP uh, facility? Do they have the right uh, NSF certifications, et cetera, et cetera? And if they answer yes to all of those questions, you can move forward. So for me, my top three supplements that I want all of my patients on, and I want everybody on that's watching to take, is number one, probiotics. 60% of our immune system resides in our intestine. They're responsible for digestion, they're responsible for elimination, and they make most, if not all, the B vitamins. Number two, vitamin D and omega-3 are real close for me. You know, which is two, which is three? But let's, stay, let's use vitamin D. For people who have low levels of vitamin D, and when I say low, I'm talking about that magic number being in the 60 to 70 range. If you're 30 and the range is 30 to 100, I don't want to be in the bottom third. I want to be in the top you third. You want optimal. I want mm -hmm. optimal. Right. You don't I want, want to just be in a range. Right? Exactly, exactly. So those folks, I tell them it's not about the dose. It has nothing to do with the dose. It has everything to do with what dose are you taking to get to that optimal level. So you measure levels. You're a proponent of saying, let's get a baseline evaluation so that we know that we're headed in the right direction. Absolutely. It's like saying, well, I mean, you're, you're an endocrinologist. This is what you've done all your life. This is how you've been trained. It's like saying, you know what? You're a diabetic, but don't worry about it. We're not going to check it. Just take a little bit of insulin. It makes we don't, no sense. It makes no sense. Right. We want to be And yet measured. that's what's happening almost all the time. And so supplements are out there, whether they're good, bad, or actually harmful to you. There's no way to know unless you see an informed clinician, somebody who's perhaps trained here, somebody who has gathered the knowledge so that they're really in a position to advise you and counsel you. And the, and the perfect example of what you just said is vitamin E. Vitamin E comes in eight different forms, eight different forms. We don't need to go into the names, but there's eight different forms, all right? If you use the DL-alpha tocopherol, which is a synthetic form of vitamin E, you can actually do more damage to your body than harm. Uh, you can, yes, you can more, more damage than good. Exactly. And there are studies that show that it actually promotes cancer. Exactly. And in fact, the study they did on vitamin E, they used the wrong form of vitamin E, and they said it did have an effect in increasing your risk of cancer. It did have a risk of more oxidation. So this is where, as you said, speaking to an informed physician who knows what they're doing, yourself and, and all of us that are here, that are speakers and part of this group, that's where you need to go to get the knowledge. What's your theory on the use of supplements? I get a lot of pushback and a lot of doctors feel strongly, no supplements. We don't know anything about it. We're not taught about it, just like we're not taught mm -hmm. about nutrition and exercise in med school. Supplements was never a hot topic. How do you feel about the need for supplements in today's world? Why, why do we need supplements? I get that question all the time when I lecture at, at Grand Rounds, at a lot of exactly. the physicians. And what I do is this. This is what I tell them tell people, I ask the doctors, I've got a question for you. You guys ready for this? Okay. For all of you that ate your six to eight servings of fruits and vegetables yesterday, we won't say today because it's the middle of the day I'm doing a lecture, let's use yesterday. For all of you that had six servings of fruits and vegetables, all colors of the rainbow, all colors of the rainbow raise your hands. There's a hundred doctors in the room. Out of the hundred doctors, this is at our hospital, out of the hundred doctors that were in the room, two <laughs> raised their hand. Not a surprise. I'm Not surprised a surpri that there were two. <laughs> well, the, the two that raised their hand was a nurse practitioner and the doctor who was the head of the complementary... Uh, An alternative uh, medicine. Right, the integrative medicine okay. division. And the nurse was a nurse practitioner who worked with her, okay? None of the other doctors. So I said to them, okay, so you didn't need it yesterday. What about the day before? Oh, no. What about last week? 
What about the, how about the last month? So all of a sudden, we're starting to see these deficiencies of nutrients. Why do you think we went from four servings of fruits and vegetables to eight, now coming up to 10? For the, the food has no nutrients in it. They're, it's being processed. All the bonds, all the protein bonds are being broken when you microwave this garbage. And then we add prescription medications. 75% of the U.S. population over the age of 50 is on at least one drug, mm -hmm. okay? There's a large percentage, over 50% of people are on more than three drugs. So those nutrients that are depleted from these drugs are contributing more to the problem. So, it's a vicious why, do you, it's a vicious, so why do you need to take a supplement? Well, your food doesn't have the nutrients. Don't tell me it does. You're not eating right. You're processing everything. There's a lot of pollution, you're under a lot of stress, and you're taking a bunch of prescription drugs. And even drugs. if you take care of yourself and exercise, you use up even more nutrients, and then you add a couple of glasses of wine several times a week, there go your B vitamins. So all in all, it's really hard to get a good dose of what you need through your regular diet. You do need to add that, and we don't live in a century where we're going out of doors picking the peak fruits and vegetables at their peak? No, they're getting marketed from a cold room mm -hmm. because they'll bring a higher price to the market. Absolutely. So, the, so all those reasons. Don't even argue with me. Right. And I tell these guys this all the time. I said, D don't even get into that debate with me because you're going to lose, all right? <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, it's, and it really comes down to just the basics, Okay. all right? We don't need to go crazy. We don't need to get esoteric. Get rid of the junk. Get rid of the sugar, get rid of the sweets, the cookies, the candy, the ice cream, get rid of all the white products like you said, and be conscious, pay attention to what you're doing every single day. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you, Derek.